So for this lesson we're going to be looking at uh, solving a rational equation. In the lessons leading up to this we've been looking at graphs of rational and reciprocal functions. So now what happens if you have a rational equation which is a polynomial divided by a po another polynomial. So let's say p of x over q of x where those are both polynomials. Ideally we want to get these into this form so we're looking to solve that. So the way that we're going to do that, no matter what sort of situation we're in to start with, the way that we're going to do that, three steps. One of them is factoring. We definitely want to be able to factor our numerators and denominators as far as possible. In general, you're going to be relying on skills you've developed for factoring quadratics. That's going to be the most common type of factoring that you're going to do but you can have these rational equations there's nothing saying they might not include a cubic or under really unfortunate circumstances a quartic so we're going to have to draw upon some skills that we've learned before for factoring cubics and quartics in higher order polynomials when you do factor you might end up with a situation where you have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator and so of course you're going to divide that out i just want you to make a mental note here that those removed factors they become restrictions when we're graphing those removed factors represent holes but overall they represent restrictions on a solution and so what that means is once you remove a factor by dividing it out your solution can never be the root of that particular factor then we're going to if we have a, a multiple fractions in our problem we're going to combine them all together generally you're going to want to combine them all on one side but the bottom line is we need to create a single fraction with a single denominator and so we want to arrange this so that one side is zero and then the other side with this common denominator and then we're going to solve so let's take a look at this first one so here you can see as I said commonly you're going to be seeing a lot of these which is a quadratic over another quadratic and so what I need to do is first start with factoring now in this case I have a simple quadratic which means the leading coefficient is one so I first thing just in my head I'm going to think what are two numbers that multiply to negative six and add to negative one and it turns out that that is going to be negative three and positive two the denominator two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to positive 1 that's going to be an x plus 4 and x minus 3 and all of that is equal to 0 so now I've done my factoring but I can also notice that I have common factors here so x minus 3 goes into the factor x minus 3 one time I'm not canceling anything here I am dividing by a common factor but that introduces a restriction which says that X cannot be equal to 3 so we need to keep that in mind basically as soon as this occurs then I need to make note of that from this point on so if I'm using that red color as my rough work then if I chose to write that extra line I would write x plus 2 over x plus 4 equals 0 and then I would put an additional x not equal to 3 so I have to carry this information forward as I go if we were graphing this would result in a hole at x equals 3 so now that I've done that we have factored our numerator and denominator I have removed factors but I have kept note of restrictions now I don't have separate fractions I have a single fraction here and I already have everything arranged so one side is zero and the other side has a common denominator because again I have a single fraction so now all I have to do is solve the numerator now why does that work why does it work to only solve the numerator because in this case um, there's no number I can put in here for X that's going to cause this entire fraction to be zero another way you could imagine it is if I multiplied both sides by x plus 4 that would get rid of this denominator now if I were to do that let's say let's you know what I just want to illustrate that if I were to take both sides let's 
Let's see if I can move this over. Oh, so the whole thing's connected together. So let's say I take both sides and I multiply everything by the factor x minus 4. Now if I were to do that, I would end up with on the left side x plus 2 equals, well, x plus 4 times 0, that's still 0. And then I'd now have an extra restriction, which is x not equal to 3, but also x not equal to 4, because I've made this denominator disappear. And if I finish solving this, I end up with my solution, which is that x is equal to negative 2. Now, at this point, do I have to worry about either of these two extra restrictions that I've carried? No, because it says the solution is negative 2, I'm not trying to have a solution of 3 and I'm not trying to have a solution of 4. So in this case, my final answer is x equals negative 2, which I could have gotten simply by solving the numerator. Now if we take this back one step, I want you to think about this. Here, if I solve this numerator before I take out common factors, notice I would have had a solution of x equals negative 2 which was correct but I also would have had a solution of x equals 3 but that would have been incorrect because the denominator then if we left the x minus 3 in the denominator still has a restriction that x cannot be 3 so we would have had to discard this as a solution anyway so we did the right thing by dividing out those common factors placing that restriction and then when we get to the end, we make sure that there are no solutions that come out at the end that land on any of these restrictions. Okay, so that's an example, a very simple example of how to solve one of these. So let's move on, do another one. Now in this case, I have two fractions and they're already in fraction form, but the two of them together are not. I need to actually combine these somehow. So I can do that a couple of ways, but focusing on the idea of fractions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring everything over to the left hand side. So that's x plus 3 over x minus 4. And now this entire fraction, this entire rational expression comes over and that whole thing is equal to 0. So if I do that, now I need a common denominator. So what does it mean to have a common denominator? Well, that means what's missing from this denominator is the factor x plus 2, and what's missing from this denominator is the factor x minus 4. So to get this thing to work, I actually need the common denominator of x minus 4 times x plus 2. Now what did I have to multiply x plus 3 what did I have to multiply top and bottom by here to get this denominator? I had to multiply by x plus 2. So this one gets multiplied by x plus 2. And that minus sign stays. And then I've got x minus 1. And what did I have to multiply top and bottom by here to get x minus 4 over here? Well, it was x minus 4. So this one times x minus 4. And that's equal to 0. This denominator is already factored. I want to leave that in its current form. But this numerator, I'm going to have to expand and simplify. So x plus 3 times x plus 2 becomes x squared plus 3x plus 2x is plus 5x. 3 times 2 is 6. When you first learn these skills, you might use FOIL and expand it and take an extra couple of steps. And if you need to do it that way, it's fine. But one of the reasons why we practice these things is so that for simple ones, we can go directly to an answer. Over here, I end up with x squared, and that's going to be minus x minus 4x is minus 5x, and negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. Now notice I'm being very careful here, and I'm keeping that first bracket, which is the first expansion, the second bracket is the second expansion, then x minus 4 x plus 2 and that's all equal to 0. And now I'm going to gather like terms. Well I have an x squared minus another x squared so there's no x squareds left 
I have a 5x minus negative 5x. So be careful here. This negative and negative become positive. So I actually end up with 10x in the numerator. And then I have a 6 plus negative 4. So that's the same as 6 minus 4. So that's plus 2. And that's all divided by x minus 4 times x plus 2 equals 0. And just to be on the safe side, I can see that there's no common factor here. But the be safest way to do this is to fully factor. So there's actually a common factor here of 2. So I take out a common factor of 2, leaving me 5x plus 1 over x minus 4 times x plus 2 equals 0. And now I can see there are no common factors, which means I'm not going to divide anything out, which means the only restrictions are the restrictions on the denominator here. But since I couldn't divide anything out, none of these restrictions on the denominator are going to affect my solution. So my solution actually just comes from the numerator. So I'm now going to solve 2 times 5x plus 1 equals 0, which means that um, x is equal to negative 1 over 5. So, And the reason why that worked is because the restriction that goes with this denominator x not equal to 4, x not equal to negative 2, neither of these have any effect on this solution. So this solution is fine. Now, I said there were a couple of ways that we could have approached that. So let's see. I think I'll see if I can do that. I'll do that maybe in another color down the, the side here. So instead, what if right away, what if I cross multiplied? So if I cross multiplied, I end up with x plus 3 times x plus 2 equals x minus 1 x minus 4. Now that's okay but when you do that because you had an x minus 4 in a denominator and an x plus 2 in a denominator you have to carry those restrictions so I don't have a lot of room here but I need to keep in mind that x is not allowed to be 4 and x is not allowed to be negative 2. And then I can go ahead and solve this and I end up getting to the same solution. You might even argue I can get to the same solution more quickly but it's not always going to work out that way. And the other thing is in a future lesson we're going to be looking at what are known as rational inequalities where this might be less than or equal to greater than or equal to in which case I cannot do this I'll get into this, the reasons for that when we cover inequalities. So I want you to understand that although this looks like an equally valid way to approach this, and for solving this equation, it will work, so long as you're careful about these restrictions, I'm going to say that this is not recommended. I'm not going to be able to fit the word recommended there. So this is not recommended. Okay, and the reason for that is going to become hopefully more obvious to you when we look at inequalities. For now, take this opportunity to do things like learn how to do a common denominator when we have some sort of polynomial factor as opposed to just a number in the denominator. And finally, here's our last example. And again, I'm going to approach this from the common denominator point of view simply because it's a skill we need to develop. So in this case I've been asked to solve this. I'm going to gather everything on the left hand side again and I'm, I'm not rushing here so I'll show you this happening. So first thing I'll do is I'll take my 1 over x, my 1 over x minus 3 and then this becomes minus 1 half equals 0. My common denominator for this whole thing is going to be the number 2, the factor x, and the factor x minus 3. And then we ask ourselves, what did I have to multiply this numerator by? It already had an x in the denominator, so I needed to multiply this numerator, which was 1. And I have to multiply it by 2 times x minus 3. Now, obviously, putting the 1 there is a bit redundant. I'm just doing it there as a placeholder to make this a little bit clearer. 
Here I have the factor x minus 3 in the denominator, so I had to multiply this 1, so it's plus this 1, plus 1, times what's left over here is 2x. And this one's going to be minus 1, and what did I have to multiply this 2 by? I had to multiply it by x times x minus 3, and that is equal to 0. Expanding this out, one, uh, the 1's no longer really matter. This negative sign matters. So this becomes 2x minus 3. This becomes plus 2x. And this becomes negative x times positive x is negative x squared. And negative x times negative 3 is positive 3x. And then on my denominator, I again leave it in factored form equals 0. Going to gather like terms. So I like to, I want to lead with my highest order term. That's the negative x squared. I've got 2x plus 2x plus 3x. That's plus 7x. And I've got negative 3. And I think I've accounted for everything there. And that is all divided by 2x times x minus 3. And all of that is equal to 0. Now that being the case, oh, I made a mistake here. My apologies. Let's go rewind the clock on this a little bit. I've got 1 times 2 times x minus 3. That's supposed to be 2x, and that's supposed to be 2 times negative 3 is supposed to be minus 6. So my apologies for that one. And that's going to mean this is a 6. Okay, let's double check that. Whenever I make a mistake like that, I'm always shakes my confidence a little bit. Maybe I rush through a little too much. So 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. This one is 1 times 2x is 2x. Negative x times x is negative x squared. Negative x times negative 3 is positive 3x. Okay, so that's all fine now. So that negative 6 replaces this. And now one thing I might like to do is with this negative x here, I think I'm just going to multiply everything by negative 1. And the reason to do that is so I end up with a positive coefficient here. Now I shouldn't need to say this, but I'm going to mention it anyway. When we talk about multiplying by negative 1, that means that you can multiply the numerator by the negative 1 or the denominator by negative 1. It is not the same as multiplying the numerator by negative 1 and the denominator by negative 1 because, of course, negative 1 over negative 1 is equal to positive 1. But we want to multiply by negative 1. And I wish I didn't have to mention that, but it is the kind of thing that I do see students either in a moment of uh, maybe they're rushing or they lose focus or some people who don't have a really strong understanding of of the differences between numerator and denominator in this particular circumstance. So multiplying by negative 1 gives me an x squared minus 7x plus 6 over 2x x minus 3 equals 0. I haven't taken out any factors yet so I still don't need to state restrictions. Everything that could be restricted is still here. Then I'm going to factor this. Two numbers that multiply together to give me 6 and add together to give me negative 7. So that needs to be two negative numbers. That's going to be x minus 1 and x minus 6 over 2x, x minus 3 equals 0. And so no common factors, nothing to divide out. So now I'm going to solve just the numerator. So I'm going to solve x minus 1, x minus 6 equals 0. And just a good habit is to keep in mind that my restrictions are x not equal to 0, x not equal to 3. And so my solution to this is x equals 1 or x equals 6. So those are my two solutions. You could have gone straight from this line to this line. We didn't need this extra line where we wrote out just the numerator on its own. So there are my two possible solutions and as you can see neither of those solutions runs into problem with the restrictions. And that is it for this lesson. Really not much in the way of a lesson, more just some illustrations of how to solve a rational equation.